Oh my god, I mentioned PvP, bro! Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to read the uh, state of the game. Let's dive into it. Life fall and the year ahead. Welcome to February Guardians. My name's Joe. You may know me as the Exo and your Grandmaster using whichever exotic bow matches the Nightfall Singe, or the Awoken on your friend list with the fire team set closed as they put another hour of attempts into soloing the latest dungeon. Or maybe even the human with three different red border weapons equipped trying to complete 10 separate bounties in a single match. But when I'm not logged into Destiny or on socials trying to convince people my Guardian's fashion game is strong, I'm also the game director for Destiny 2. In a couple weeks, Lightfall will be in your hands. An ultimate expansion in the Light and Darkness saga, it's a radical acceleration towards the final shape. But as excited as we all are about Lightfall, it's not the only thing coming to Destiny 2 this year. Oh? Destiny is a massive, living, breathing organism, and what it requires to thrive is an incredible development team with a constantly updated list of priorities that can regularly inject high value changes. So today, we're going to pull back the curtain and talk about how we see the game right now and what changes we need to make to allow Destiny to continue to evolve and thrive the way we all want. First, the good. We have gone to a place where Guardians can expect consistency in the quality of content coming to Destiny 2 all year long. From the Witch Queen to Season of the Seraph, we, all, we are incredibly proud of all the high quality shooter content and storytelling that has been added to the game over the last 12 months. But amid this quality and consistency, Destiny 2 can sometimes feel too predictable. While some consistency is necessary for us to be able to regularly update the game and prevent players from having to relearn Destiny every three months, as well as to maintain our team health and sustain sustainability, it is clear that too much predictability has created a lack of surprise and delight by the time some of our major game updates get in your hands. Aside from predictability, we sometimes still hear a refrain that has been sung since the beginning of our journey. There's just not enough to do. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they give us so much more content today compared to Destiny 1 days, and we, we still say that, which is just odd. It's probably not fair. While there is plenty happening at the start of the expansion or seasonal drop, by the end of the season, we often see our most engaged players lamenting that they have to run out of things to sink their teeth into. Yeah, yeah. This is not a problem that one more strike or an additional map can solve. Destiny 2 has an incredible amount of content, but sometimes not all of our content is as rewarding or engaging as we'd like, and sometimes you just can't find anyone to play it with. Okay, they understand. So with the issues laid out in front of us, we created four big goals for Destiny 2 leading up to the final shape. Expand players' imaginations. Huh? <laughs> How? What? what? Bring challenge back. Ah! They're bringing back the challenge to destiny. <laughs> Enrich our content. We like that. Connect our guardians. We like that too. LFGs. Yo, freaking salt grapple, man. Gosh, bro. He just, he just listened to, to streamers. I hate him. Now, none of these goals will be achieved with one change and they're all going to require consistent maintenance to remain true. But for the rest of our time together today, I would like to walk you through how we plan to address these four big goals in 2023. Expand players' imaginations. In Destiny 2, <laughs> we want each major update to get the gears inside of our players' heads turning on what's new and what it means for the way to interact with the game. This wasn't true for all of our releases last year, and it's going to take some changes across multiple releases to get us where we want to be. We can't break all the design bones we want right away, so instead, let's unpack how we all will take this on, this big challenge over the course of the next year. Season of Defiance. Lifefall launch alongside season of defiance and while most of this content was wrapped up before this new goal was put into place we still have numerous seasonal quality of life changes along with substantial iterations to our current model coming to shake things up starting with reducing complexity with our progression system this means fewer competing currencies to earn well, we're doing away with the umbrals and the umbral energy, so after you've unlocked Season of Focusing, if you want to focus an engram into a particular Season Weapon or Armor, all you need is Glimmer and Seasonal Engram. Additionally, Seasonal Engrams will be stored and tracked on Seasonal Vendors, so managing the Engram bucket in your character's inventory will be much easier than it is today. Season of Defiance, huh? Look at this. Not a fan of the armor, personally. The bow looks sick. Fusion Rifle looks kind of nice. Season of Defiance. We see uh Mera. Sov. 
We also won't be asking you to hold large stacks of seasonal currency to unlock a chest at the end of every seasonal activity. Instead, we will be dropping singular keys throughout your playtime that allow you to extract better rewards from the chest at the end of seasonal activity. This will create a simpler relationship where you know that if you have one key, you're getting even better rewards. We finally get skeleton keys back. Okay, dude. This is basically skeleton keys, right? It's about time. If you don't know, in Destiny 1, we had a thing called Skeleton Keys. These keys basically allow you to target farm, and it's been one of the most, like, asked for things in Destiny 2, because RNG is just is brutal, right? It also represents the repositioning of these chests as true bonuses, not requirements. Unlike today's seasonal currencies, keys won't drop every time you complete an activity. To compensate for this change, we made the base rewards for each seasonal activity completion better. So, when you earn and spend a key, it is a meaningful bonus, not a requirement to engage in the seasonal playlist. Finally, by default, keys can drop from seasonal activities, which means you are no longer required to play content outside of the seasonal playlist to chase seasonal rewards. On top of these changes in seasonal defiance, players can expect fewer total vendor upgrades, with each individual upgrade being more potent and some upgrades even offering a variance on the way you interact with the seasonal activity. In Season of Defiance, we've also taken a big stab at the way we name our various progression systems and currencies. We want any player to read the name of something and immediately understand what it does, in short, to spend more time playing and less time trying to understand what they are supposed to do. It seems more targeted for a new light player, which I like. The game is definitely very confusing when you first start, it's like, what is this currency for? How do I use all these different things on the screen? In Seasons to Come. After Season of Defiance, we will head into the Season of the Deep while we're getting the next name already. With some time under our belt to react to recent player feedback, Season of the Deep will not feature a vendor upgrade paradigm. The same will be true for the following season. This doesn't mean players will never see a vendor upgrade system again, but instead means we want to create more varied experimental frameworks and slowly create a wide array of different systems for players to show their investment into seasonal content. All right. So when you go talk to Rasputin or the Helm thing and you see like the upgrade systems that's going away in Season of the Deep. This looks like we might... Wait, are we going back to Titan? And the only reason I'm saying that's because when you think deep, you think of waters, oceans, right? Sharks. And the only like water-like experience we've ever had in Destiny was Titan. <laughs> like the whole planet was covered in water. This variety will also extend into types of content players experience in the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay of our later seasons. In both Season of the Deep and Season 22, the team is pushing to envelope to create more fresh activity experiences, like when we first met, unveiled the Shattered Realm in Season of the Lost, or debuted Battlegrounds in Season of the Chosen. Good, good, good. One thing we want to continue from last year is casting a wide net when it comes to the themes and fantasies our players can expect with each release. Lightfall already has a different tone and setting from the Witch Queen, and we want to continue this tone of variety in our seasonal content. From the Reapers to Pirates to Cowboys, last year's seasons proved that Destiny 2 can encompass experiences that contain widely varied inspirations, and we are committed to the adventures in Lightfall's collection of seasons feeling just as thematically fresh from one another as they did last year. I think this is pretty solid. You they kind of keep you on your toes on what the theme is going to be next season. They're not all going to be a hit. Some of them you're not really going to connect with. It's like pirates. I don't care. Right. And honestly, this is a pretty bold move from their part, because when they start taking these thematics uh, seasons, they are leaving themselves prone to be compared to other games. So I hope they're ready to just kind of like pop off and make some good stuff, because when they did the season of the hunt, right, it was like Monster Hunter theme. But oh, my God, was it just kind of embarrassing to play when you know how monster hunter you know treated their monster hunting activities right so I, I hopefully they can really really um pop off with those seasons these stories progressions and themes aren't the only way we think we can stretch the player imagination space some of this is going to come from putting new systems into destiny 2 or revisiting systems that aren't quite hitting the mark in Lightfall, we will be adding Guardian ranks to the game alongside rethinking Destiny to build crafting with loadouts. While we aren't going too deep to go deep into either of those systems here, they both represent new lenses that we want to continue to apply for Destiny 2. For example, Guardian ranks aim to be the effortless way our Guardians share their place in their journey with one another. 
No longer will the number next to your name play be a representation of how much you've grinded the season pass. Thank God! Bro, I I did not like that at all, man. It's like the only like hype when you see a garden. It wasn't even their their tag, like how would I say their title? It was like their seasonal rank. And that is just kind of cringe to me. It's like season pass, really? Instead, it's a representation of your experience as a garden and the challenges you face in overcame. I am so down for that. Now, personally, this is just speaking for myself. When I see that big garden rank, like high rank, I'm like, okay, that guy's a gamer. Oh no, I don't know for sure. What are we doing? Adding skill-based matchmaking to PV? <laughs> Weapon crafting. You're going to want a killer set of weapons for those challenges, and this year we're going to change how you think about obtaining those weapons with some major updates to weapon crafting. While we love having some sources of deterministic perks, we found that the route to getting the weapons you want to craft can be too random. <gasps> what? Really? At the same time, we can also believe that weapon crafting being a part of so many of our weapon chases has diminished the joy of simply getting back, getting a great perk roll to drop as a drop. So here's what you can expect to change the weapon crafting in Lightfall. Wow, I am actually shocked they actually addressed this part. It kind of surprises you sometimes, right? As a player, you're like, wow, they actually listen to the feedback? Because <laughs> this is definitely a pain point. Man, it has taken away a lot of the hype from getting one of those cracked rolls to drop, especially if it's a craftable weapon. If I get like a almost like a four out of five Ostringer, I don't care for whatever reason. I just don't care. It's not hype at all. I just can go craft it. I delete those guns before I even had the craftable version. It was insane. So here's, here's what we can expect. To create independent chases for both crafted and non-crafted weapons starting with Lightfall, fewer of our total weapons will be craftable and more of our weapons with long-term sources will get value from random perk rolls. Interesting. Wow. Okay. There's going to be fewer weapons to craft. So does this mean that the guns that are craftable, even though they're craftable, they'll have a set of perks, but those guns that you go grind will be updated with perks. I'm not, I'm not really too sure, but it seems pretty solid from what I can understand. Less weapons to craft means obviously there's going to be more high for grinding more weapons out there in the wild due to RNG. To allow these non-crafted weapons to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with crafted weapons in Lightfall, in the year of Lightfall, more and more of our non-crafted weapons, starting with new raid adepts this year, will have the ability to be enhanced. Our non-crafted weapons will have the ability to be enhanced. Wow. Enhancing allows you to drop your weapon to start leveling up, use mementos, and gain access to both enhanced perks and enhanced intrinsic properties. But only the enhanced version of these perks and the masterwork that are already on the version of the weapon you are, are enhancing. So this is kind of a way to fix one of the major pain points when it comes to crafting a weapon and not having them like the other perks unlocked, right? It's pretty solid. Simply said, with some time and resources, enhancing allows you to take the random rolled weapon you've obtained and enhance its existing roll to match the full power of a crafted weapon. It sounds pretty sick. You level it up to the enhanced version. What does this remind you of? It kind of gives me like those um, year, year Destiny 1 leveling up a weapon vibes. You know when you had like those upgrades? Like you had so many columns and circles to upgrade and now it's like you're leveling up the gun, right? We are targeting to roll this out initially with Lightfall, Raid of Depths, and the launch of Season of the Deep. Long term, we want to expand this functionality to most of our new non-crafted weapon drops, but there are some technical hurdles we need to solve first. For crafted weapons, we will have some additional changes planned. You will never see Deep Sight on a weapon unless it's something you need to make a pattern progress on. When you see the red border in game, you will know it's valuable. Thank you! Yeah! I think that's good. Because now there's like more hype to see in a drop, like an exotic, right? Well, right now, when you think of things that excite you, when you see something just randomly drop, it's just a god, right? Or an exotic engram. Unless, uh, if there's not new exotics, you don't really care. Targeting Season of the Deep, we will also be adding a mechanism to activate Deep Sight on any craftable weapon they do not have a pattern for. Finally, we want to tackle one more thing out of the game to help with our goal of expanding the player imagination, and that's giving our players a little more of a sneak peek into releases before they hit the servers. <gasps> So while some of our releases this year will be kept secret until, the, until they hit players' machines, others like Season of the Deep will preview and share key details ahead of time. Okay, never mind. Uh, I thought they were about to hit us with like, you get to play the game early. <laughs> so bring challenge back to the Destiny. Okay. Oh, man. Feel bad for Stall Grapple. He's about to get canceled on Twitter. 
We could have all the variety in the world, and that wouldn't matter if we weren't also making sure that the content our players spend the most time with is engaging and interesting. There's a lot that goes into making a piece of Destiny content engaging, but at the Chewy Center, it's CHALLENGE! Last year, we spent a lot of time bringing all of our subclasses up to Stasis 3.0 standard. During that time, not only did our abilities become more powerful, but their synergy with weapons and gear raised the total power tide for all boats. The result of these changes is a game with more compelling RPG, but at times lower levels of challenge in our core content. With a player base as large as Destiny's, the right level of difficulty is going to be different for everyone. Exactly, that's the problem. While we are still committed to offering multiple difficulty levels in content such as our campaigns, nightfalls, secret missions, dungeons, and raids, we feel like the baseline challenge in most of our content is just too low. <laughs> oh my god, bro. Listen, just some context. I don't get involved in the conversation because I just feel like it's a waste of energy. You're going to exhaust yourself. You're never going to make the other side agree with you. It's just kind of like a, you stand your ground, the other side stands your ground, you don't agree. The context here is that for like maybe the past year or so, there's a lot of like PvE players. They don't have to be like hardcore streamers. Maybe they don't play Destiny like every single day anymore. But the point is, there's a lot of people complaining that the game is not challenging enough. And then you have a majority of group, like this majority of group, it's, it, it, it outnumbers the people talking about the game being a little bit too easy. Outnumbers them with comments such as, just make it harder for yourself, bro. Put on a blindfold. How about you just drop your resilience from 10 to 0, man, if you want the challenge. Bro, just don't use these guns, this and that, right? So it's just kind of like a, an insight of all these different types of opinions, right? Two cents people have. And this is like, this is the majority, right? And they were kind of like really just tacking, tackling down or attacking the, the minority of people that like PV a lot, are really passionate, that want the challenge, and they just think there's no challenge. This right here is basically saying our, our challenging content is just too low. So that's crazy to me. That's crazy to me. I, I never really took a side, but like, it's just that majority basically was wrong. And it was, they were so, they were pretty toxic, man. They were really mean about, you know, the way they treated um, pretty good PVE players. They don't, again, they don't have to be content creators, streamers, hardcore speedrunners. They were just good PVEers, the average Joe, tuning abilities. Bringing challenge back to Destiny requires a two pronged approach. If we just tuned up our enemies across the game, we would start to encounter issues where combats frequently one shot players and would feel super spongy. Smart, smart. One of the biggest downsides of playing Grandmasters, personally for me, just my personal enjoyment, I just never found Grandmasters to be fun challenge where a shank could just one shot you, right? It's, it's, it's just not really that fun. As a result, even more relaxing content would require players to conform to the most meta guarding loadouts. On the other hand, if we were to only tune the player's efficiency, the RPG elements would start to feel like they matter less, and Destiny might start to lose its essential fantasy of being this powerful battle wizard in space. So instead of focusing just on one vector, we're going to take measured approaches in both the player's toolkit and the strength of our monsters. Alright, let's see what they say. Let's start with the player's toolkit. Across PvE and PvP, oh my god, I mentioned PvP, bro! We believe the abilities dominate too many engagements due to potency, which we don't want to nerf, and uptime, which we do want to tackle. Destiny is a game about guns and powers, we want both to shine. So starting with Lightfall, we are moderately increasing ability recharge time across a wide selection of our abilities, as mentioned in the ability tuning preview last week. We've also noticed that enemy combats just aren't hitting as hard as we want them to, especially against max resilient guardians, so we're adjusting the amount of damage resistance granted by resilience and increasing the energy cost of resilient mods from 1 to 2 for minor mods and 3 to 4 for major mods. Wow! Same points as resilience. Wow. Okay. Four points for resilience. That's crazy. Wow. That artifice? Artifice. <laughs> Artifice armor is going to matter so much more too because you get a free tier right with those plus threes. I'm so glad I grinded for it. With the build crafting updates in Lifefall, we believe great builds would be much more accessible to the community. Solid. While we still want your gear and your mods to be critical, some of the buffs to Garden's damage and survivability were just a bit too strong in the old system, so we've taken this opportunity for a balancing patch to gear-driven buffs. Now, 
I know these last paragraphs might have been scary to read, but we don't think these changes are going to be a big swing of the balanced pendulum. More than anything, this is going to reunite the somewhat unintentional power creep that we saw over the last year. We're committed, as always, to making your garden feel like the ultimate monster killing machine, and I'm confident with Strand, our new build crafting updates, and a suit of new weapons coming in Lifefall, you will all be making Zavala and Shax very proud. Enemy, enemy mine. But I promise a two-sided approach to the challenge, so let's talk about how things will be shaking up with enemy difficulty. Recently, we've been happy with the level of challenge presented in the base uh, highest battleground playlist. To achieve this, we use a difficulty knob that enforces just how overleveled we will let players be compared to the enemies they are fighting. This knob has always been present across of our activities, it's just adjusted on how evergreen we want the challenge to be in those missions. We were pretty aggressive with this adjustment in Season of the Seraph, and it produced great results. So the base battlegrounds playlist in Season of Defiance will use the same setting, solid. Carrying this approach over, we are also going to be adjusting the same difficulty tweak on the Vanguard Ops playlist. What? We aren't going to set this playlist now to a level quite as intense as battleground playlist, but we do want to use the setting to make Vanguard Ops a lot more engaged into the average guardings starting in Lightfall. This approach to power and difficulty is also going to be present when players are roaming around Neo Muna, and while we don't want the entire game to feel like it's turned up to 11, we think these changes will help the enemy forces patrol Neo Muna feel dangerous and- Oh, I'm so excited! Oh my god, I'm actually so hyped. This is going to be so hyped. They're not going to be as correct as the battlegrounds, uh, heist battlegrounds we had this season, but they're going to be a little bit more correct. And I'm, I'm actually really excited for that. They're, they're trying to like level up the, the difficulty for certain players, but they know it's like, I mean, we can make it more harder for you, but the problem is the new light players are really going to struggle against, against those guys, right? For now, I'm actually really looking forward to this, man. Alnia Muna, Vanguard Ops strikes are going to be so much more fun. They're not going to just be like, turn off your brain autopilot. Unless you have a crack build, it could still very much happen. Again, it's not going to be super hard. You have, you may have noticed that we have been experimenting a lot with our power settings over the last few seasons, and we're planning on taking on even more experiments this year. We think there are some major issues with power in Destiny 2 and how it prevents players from seeing some of our best content, but we'd like to make a big change to the system in the final shape. However, to understand more about how our changes could be improved, we want to be tweaking, we want to keep tweaking our power settings over the year of Lightfall. Some of these tweaks might be found in our back end with little transparency to the average guardian, while others will be front and center. For example, when Lightfall launches, we will have a power climb that is very similar to that in Witch Queen, but later in Season of the Deep, we don't plan to raise the power or pinnacle cap at all. Ooh. Hey, no more worrying about doing mindless power level grinding. Enrich our content. With all of these changes to power and pursuits, we also want to make sure there's plenty for players to sink their teeth into over the next year. For the last few years, we've been trying to attack this problem by trying to squeeze one more morsel of new content in each release, but I think we can get better results with a different strategy, making the existing death of incredible content in Destiny 2 more valuable to a new and returning, returning Guardians. Mm -hmm. Okay, they don't really give us any details on how they plan to do that, how they plan to accomplish that, but it's nice to read. You get a little bit of comfort knowing, all right, we're not just going to like take an idea and, you know, do the bare minimum. We're going to actually like invest some effort into it and see if we can like innovate this idea a little bit, right? I'm curious. Fiery. Oh my God, they said PvP. They said Crucible. Please blow my mind away. We're dying out there, man. Let's start with one of our most evergreen rituals, the Crucible. Player versus player combat is here to stay in Destiny 2. As we think it's one of the most inherently replayable parts of the Destiny experience. Last year, we injected several new modes into PvP from Rift to Eruption to Fortress. We're excited for some of these game modes to get more face time in the core ritual experience, but we're not done adding variety to the ways you engage with PvP. In Season of Defiance, we're looking at getting Countdown back into the game along with a respawn variant of the game mode we call Countdown Rush. There's like that one dude in chat on Twitter. It's like two people on Reddit. Oh my god, they're bringing back Countdown, bro! Oh my god, dude! Cool. Countdown was really not that hype, but at least we're getting Countdown back. It could play out pretty well with the new meta. I'm curious about Countdown Rush where players must detonate defuse bombs on the map before the round ends. Oh! Must detonate defuse bombs. 
Oh, that now that's cracked. You see, that was the problem I had with Countdown. You could just kill three people and it didn't matter. This way, you must actually have to plant the bomb, defuse the bomb. I mean, it, I don't know. It might still just be you kill the three players and the round is over, which wouldn't make sense if they're all three dead and you can't plant them. If you don't, if you don't plant the bomb, what? You lose a round? I, I don't know. I want it to be more like search and destroy, man. I think that's like the problem I have. Like just reading this countdown, I'm just like, I think back, it's like, I know countdown never hit me like search and destroy did. And I really want it to, right? We also aim to run a series of crucible laps, including a mode where the player sandbox has dramatically changed. What? Weapon damage, ability uptime, and even ammo are all adjusted in a new mode tentatively tilted. Check mate control. This mode will reward players who use their smarts and their skills. If the only way the enemy has been able to shut you down in the past is a solo blade barrage, they might be in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> he just called all of us out, man. It's like, oh, dude, the only way you can kill that one dude is by popping your shipper on it. Hey, you're in trouble, man. Well, that's in the community. Just said, GG's, man. Check me controls dead on launch. <laughs> This isn't all we have planned for modes, so keep your eyes on labs for more classic and all new modes later this year. I mean, checkmate control sounds pretty fun. I, I don't know about the damage. I don't want another momentum control. I mean, maybe I do. Momentum control was fun, minus like the, the uh, super spam. I mean, I'm curious. Weapon damage, huh? I mean, I don't see them upping the damage. Maybe they do. Maybe they make hand cannons from three headshots to two bodies, one, two head, one body. Like Destiny 1 damage. We can definitely assume ability uptime are going to be lower. Same with supers. All right. Now, we think that a steady stream of novel game modes and a reigning in of player power is going to do a lot for the health of our PvP ecosystem, but we're still committed to keeping true to our Crucible Maps plan, which means the arrival of Meltdown in Season of the Deep and a brand new Vex network map in Season 22 and the return of Citadel. <laughs> Keep it vaulted! Keep it vaulted! If you thought backing out of this junction was bad, if you thought nothing else would ever top this junction, if you never played Citadel, well, I got news for you, bro. Get ready to back out. You, you just think about it. It's not even the map you're loading into, but you think about Citadel, you just rage quit off the game. So we're getting Meltdown. That's pretty hype. Meltdown is back. Sweet, we missed it. Vex network map in season 22. We're probably going to get like Vex portals. So sounds like fun. We will also be looking at our existing maps and doing a spawn returning paths on many of them this year to improve how various modes flow. Cool. In matchmaking, we still don't feel like we have nailed the trade-off between fair matches and good connections. Oh, wow. I'm shocked. We still need to get features like dynamic skill ranges in game to allow for players across all skill levels to get consistently high quality connections in their matches. Yeah, bro. As we continue to adjust algorithms to improve connection qualities, we are also turning our eyes towards lobby balancing. Is this real right now? They're actually listening to some complaints. I never thought I would hear us uh, read Bungie actually typing out the words lobby balancing. God, you say lobby balancing to a PVP player and they just like, they ju you just stress them out. They gain like an extra year on their life where we aim to construct matches with a more consistent skill spread amongst players on both teams. I don't know when that's going to happen, but I mean, eventually, I guess. We also want to continue to zoom out and make sure we're upgrading the meta systems that encourages folks to play PvP. Think of things like Iron Banner revamp, our recent increases to Iron Banner reputation, and our commitment to having three Iron Banners per season this year. While we haven't settled on all the final details, we are currently looking at the rewards and matchmaking structures of Trials of Osiris, <laughs> we're going to push more updates to the mode this year in order to more consistently keep the population at healthier levels. Matchmaking structures of Trials of Osiris. I mean, skill based matchmaking is going to happen eventually. This might just be like solo players versus only solo players, and they don't match into three stacks. But this is hinting at something more that people are scared of. In competitive, we want to improve the speed at which players climb to the rank that most matches are crucible skill and ensure it's clear why you won or lost a specific number of rank points shown after the match. I mean, I like the fact that it's going to be more clear what points you get, but faster? Improve the speed? No, man. This is Bungie. Hold your ground, bro. 
You want to make a comp playlist. Don't make it one of those like checklists of like, oh, let me just invest time and I'll get the max rank. I'm not trying to reset my rank like it's a freaking strike rank, dude. I'm not trying to reset my crucible rank, all right? It's not, I'm not meant to like get there eventually. You do have to invest a lot of hours to get to a specific rank sometimes. Exotic mission rotator. Trials won't be the only thing getting love as far as rituals go. That's it for crucible? GG's. Crucible is doomed. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, bro. You're getting four maps. Matchmaking. Yeah, bro. Yeah. And uh, you get like two modes. Good. Have fun, man. That's, uh, that's our plan for 2023. Wow. That's pretty sad. Trials won't be the only thing getting love as far as rituals go. So let's start talking about the PV side of the game. Over the years, we've added a ton of great exotic missions like Presage and Operation Serve Shield to Destiny 2. This year, not only will we will continue to create new exotic missions, but starting in season 22, we will be adding an existing exotic mission rotator. Like our legacy raid and dungeon rotators, the exotic mission rotator will feature exotic missions from the past that rotate on the weekly cadence and offer great rewards for players willing to dive into some classic content. In season 22, this rotator will contain the exotic missions from season 13, 16, and 19. Presage, Vox Obscure, and Operation Sir. Yo, Presage is coming back! With this framework implemented, we hope to use this rotator in the future to continue to bring some of Destiny 2's more classic missions back into Wait, so there's potential we get the Outbreak Prime mission back. Wow. And the Whisper of the mission back. Wow, dude. Imagine that. Imagine that. Refreshing our strikes. Another area of PvE we think we can have a big effect on is the Vanguard Rituals. We have already talked about how we're going to be making the Vanguard House playlist more engaging by raising the challenge level, but with Lifefall, we're also shaking up some of the activities inside the playlist. This effort will begin with refreshing the Lake of Shadows and Arms Dealer Strikes. Both activities have had their objectives and encounters reimagined and upgraded to match the combat engagement levels of some of the more recent strike entries, such as Lightblade and Proving Grounds. Reimagined? What does that mean? Is it just adding new ads, more ads? Or is it changing the landscape, how it flows, you know, adding new POIs to like the strike? Hopefully it's more, you know, of that type of reimagine, writing rather than just saying, oh yeah, we're gonna add like a new mechanic that's gonna like slow down the strike. Oh bro, that's totally what's gonna happen. Oh bro, they're totally gonna make us do like some weird mechanics that don't let us speed run. Cause we we love speedrunning Lake of Shadows, and they probably don't like that. No, bro, these are the best. No, bro. Okay, I don't speak for everyone, but I speak for a good part that Lake of Shadows and Arms Dealer were like some of the best strikes to farm. Like they were the, my favorites to play because they're just fast. You can just instantly bait the boss. You have access to the boss right away. There's not a time gate to the boss. And the fact that they mentioned both of these to reimagine, it just, it doesn't sound like anything hype to me. It sounds like there's only one thing they can do and that's screw it up. <laughs> if they'd said... Let's say, for example, what's a, like, hollowed lair, the strike, you know, with the freaking scorn boss with 50 health gates. If they mentioned that one, I would have been hyped. I, now I'm scared. That's really unfortunate. I, I'm, I'm hoping for the best case scenario here. In addition, we're also taking strikes that have not been updated recently, such as Exodus Crash and the Inverted Spire, and dramatically reducing the presence in the Vanguard Ops playlist while eliminating them from the Nightfall rotations. These strikes will still be available for direct launch, but until they get brought up to the engagement parity with some of our recent Vanguard content, they will not show up as frequently as part of a ritual gameplay. Welcome PvE players to our maps getting sunset in the DCV. Not really, but just making a joke there. Aside from strikes, we're also going to be upgrading how Battlegrounds integrate with Vanguard Ops. Alongside Lightfall, the Season 16 and Season 19 Battlegrounds will be added to the Vanguard Ops playlist, we really like the fast enemy filled chaos battlegrounds, so this year we will also be adding a selection of battlegrounds as nightfalls. Ooh. This process will begin with the Mars Highest Battleground being part of the Nightfall rotation in Season of Defiance, and we expect more battlegrounds to be following suit each season. It's pretty exciting news. Eventually, we might even see them as Grandmasters. Quite interesting, yeah? We're excited to see how players tackle Season of Defiance first Nightfall rotation, where four out of the six Nightfalls will be the new or refreshed content coming to the Grandmaster rotation for the first time. Wait, what? Wait, 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 wait. Four of the six Nightfalls will be new or refreshed content. 
We expect even the older Nightfalls to feel rekindled by new loadout options. Since the match game modifier is also being retired from Nightfalls with the launch of Lightfall. Now you're hoping too much. You're not right here. <laughs> you think just removing match game modifier is going to rekindle a lot. You're hoping too much. But this, uh, this, this first statement was, was nice. Because we get Ice Battlegrounds or some old Nightfalls we never got to play in Grandmaster form. I'm excited. I, I've been just waiting and waiting and waiting for so long for Grandmasters to get like, you know, new life. Breathe into it, right? As we get further away from Lightfall and our seasonal schedule, we're going to be make some targeted changes to ritual content based on what we've observed about why players to engage in this content. While we don't expect these changes to make it to Season of the Defiance, over time we want to start pushing both more rewards to ritual content and more options, options to engage with our ritual content. This will include changes such as moving the initial source of obtaining exotic armor away from lost sectors and back into the core rituals, no longer asking players to earn all three of the ritual pursuit ornaments and seasonal challenges and allowing players to earn more new rewards and complete more of the weekly challenges by playing content of their choice, not just in the newest seasonal activity playlist. Okay. So this is not happening in Season of Defiance, but later, eventually, they want the Exodus to just drop from the random world, pretty much, right? I mean, that's kind of good and bad. I'm going to miss Lost Sectors, you know, going in solo with a cracked build, doing the master difficulty to farm exotics. You know, that felt really fun, like a mini, you know, solo personal dungeon to you. And now it's just kind of RNG out there. But that's actually kind of a good thing for the, I guess, kind of health of the game, maybe, if you want to say, because that RNG aspect back in Destiny 1 plays such a huge role in excitement of exotics. Like, dude, look what I got to drop. <clears throat> if you remember back then in Destiny 1, like, people would always post, like, their their little images on Twitter or something. It's like, dude, look, guess what dropped today? And then the, the homies in the comment section, the replies are like, ah, oh, dude, you got that to drop, man. You're so lucky, dude. You know? This rebalancing of objectives and rewards is going to be a slow burn over the year of Lightfall, and we're going to take a more direct approach in our last season of the year, dedicating a significant amount of development time toward a more core, ritual-focused season. While this season will have plenty of new activity and story content, we want to take this time right before the final shape to crisp up our core rituals and pursuits as we head into our final expansion of the Light and Darkness Saga. This last seasonal effort is just now getting underway, so expect more details as we get further into the year. Connect our Guardians A lot of what we have planned for this year is right around the corner, including big features like commendations and guardian ranks with the launch of Lightfall. This commendation system is the first step in creating stronger connections between Guardians this year. It can be too hard to reach out to someone you don't know. Commendations are an icebreaker, a simple way of saying thanks to players that you appreciate playing with. Over time, players will accumulate a ton of different commendations that help build the story for how others in Destiny 2 perceive you. Certain commendations like Paysetter and Saint's Favorite are only available to be given in Trials of Osiris, while others like Perceptive and Knowledgeable are given out in Raid and Dungeon content. Eventually, the commendations journal will become a history for where you've been and what you've done. Wow! Alright, all I'm saying is everybody better make sure they make me Saint's favorite, alright? With the commendation system, those at the highest levels of guardian ranks will have proven to be folks that are consistently appreciated by others in the community. Sometimes, it will be... They are the kinds of people willing to do the heavy lifting when organizing a large group of players. Sometimes it will be because, even if they aren't the kinds of people comfortable speaking up, they are always doing what needs to be done to help the group overcome the obstacle in front of them. Aww. Over the last few weeks, I've been playing a bunch of heist battlegrounds and often I'll get matched with a pair of folks that I have a lot of synergy with and we will end up absolutely crushing the hive infestation. This joy has come with this tiny sense of regret that I'm not living just a few weeks in the future and able to pass along a couple commendations to show my thanks. I can't wait for Lightfall to be in everyone's hands so we can all have this opportunity to show gratitude to our fellow guardians. Yeah, bro? Nice chat. Commendations represent just the first step of reaching out to one another. 
If players want to generate a deeper relationship, they need to have the opportunity to communicate. Over the last few years, Destiny 2 has often felt too lonely for those who aren't playing with folks they know. In order to improve this, we'd like to invest in the overall chattiness of Destiny 2. This is not something that's going to happen right away with Lightfall, but we want to start opening up more lines of communication between our players this year. To start, we want to change our game-wide text chat channels from opt-in to opt-out. What this means is that more players will naturally be put into our text channels, so you have more frequent opportunities to reach out to a fellow guardian. Over time, we'd like to continue to invest in deeper chat moderation, better filtering, and bigger features like speech to text. So is this implying that it's going to automatically put me in like the world op automatically opted in or no? Because just having the option, if I'm opted out from the start, people just will ignore it, I feel like. It's kind of like... Uh, pvp right now they have the voice opt-in the text opt-in but like almost nobody uses it to start we want to change our game wide text channels from oh uh, we think that the text chat is a great way for players to communicate with one another at their own pace while retaining some anonymity this does not mean that text chat is going to become required for destiny 2 we still plan on allowing anyone inside destiny 2 the ability to opt out of text chat entirely meaning they will never automatically be added to a social text chat Okay, there you go. We also plan to allow anyone the option to quickly leave channels on a case-by-case -case basis if the chat is trending in a way that makes their game experience worse. This is all going to be very new for Destiny, so I expect that we will be learning a lot from these first few steps and tweaking our plans with chat and how, how open various channels are as we go forward and get feedback from all of you. It's a pretty big change, man. Definitely. Fire Team Finder. The last piece of our social puzzle for the year is our biggest Fire Team Finder. Initially, we hope to get our take on the first class in game looking for group tool in players' hands this summer with season 22. <gasps> so it's not happening? Along with our next reprise raid, making the perfect pairing for new raiders. But as our plans became more solidified, we realized that the features needed to create a truly top notch LFG experience were going to require a bit more time. So while the reprise rate is still coming out this summer, we're pushing Fire Team Finder out to the final season of the year alongside with a brand new dungeon. Well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. For those that were waiting for that. We think that a truly first class LFG system won't be perfect until we can see how our players use it, but we want to make sure that the initial launch still has a ton of features that will allow players to find a fire team instead of destiny. This means a fire team finder that you can queue up for from anywhere in the game the ability to tag your posts with keywords to describe the kind of group you're running and the kind of people you're looking to recruit the option to create groups where folks can join automatically allowing to get the right right into the action and the power to create groups where you as the leader can approve or deny each person trying to join up giving you tight control over the kind of group you're putting together I can't wait for Fire Team Finder to make its way into players' hands later in Life Falls here and to see how many more Guardians will be able to enjoy some of the best content in gaming alongside all of you. So, those are the big four for the year. Expand players' imaginations, bring challenge back to Destiny, enrich our content, and connect our Guardians. It's not going to happen all at once, and we most certainly will try some things that are going to land right on the first attempt. But we're going to continue to take risks for Destiny 2 because we think taking risks is essential to surprising and delighting our players. It's possible that we get into this year and discover a new set of opportunities and challenges for us to pursue. If that happens and our roadmap for the year changes, you'll hear from us. We'll keep you posted on our website and socials. As we talked about at, a, at the start, Destiny 2 is big, living, breathing organism, and what it needs to thrive is always changing, but one thing you can count on is that just as so many of you are choosing to spend your precious time in this game world, we are proud and grateful to be there dreaming about creating and experiencing this game we all love. Thank you for reading and see you on Neil Muna, Joe Blackburn, Game Director of Destiny 2. Well, GG's. Interesting post.